Hi, I'm Arnie Gunderson from Fairwinds. I've been thinking a lot lately about what happened in the first day of a nuclear accident at Fukushima. And I think I've come up with some interesting information that I wanted to share with you. The, the facility at, at, at Fukushima was one of the largest nuclear reactors in the world. And I'm sure you've seen the, the videos of it when, uh, when it was functioning, and it's truly an impressive um, facility. Well, everyone has also seen the, uh, the pictures of the facility after the explosions. And in that period of a couple days, it went from a several billion dollar asset to a hundreds of billion dollar liability. And I believe it's the uh, single biggest industrial accident in the history of the world. But I wanted to focus on what happened after the tsunami, but before the explosions. And I think there's some important information that can be gleaned from the historical record. I need to go back and, and talk a little bit about um, uh, nuclear fundamentals for a minute here, though. The nuclear reactor sits inside a nuclear containment. Now, the containment is, um, uh, we've shown before, and, and the one that's uh, on the screen now is the um, Browns Ferry nuclear reactor. The top of that containment has a lid on it, and it's connected by many, many bolts. So, now I'm going to use a, a tea infuser here to explain it another way. This is the containment. The nuclear reactor sits inside the containment. And then that lid gets screwed to the top. So that if there is an accident and a, and a pipe breaks inside the nuclear containment, in theory, all of the contaminated gases stay inside that containment. Well, it's been known for a long time that the Mark I reactor is a very small reactor containment. And uh, as a result, back in the 80s, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission added a vent to it. And the reason for that is that engineers didn't understand when they built this unit that hydrogen gases could build up after an accident. Well, that's exactly what happened at Fukushima. At Fukushima, the, the uh, nuclear reactor was uncooled, and the nuclear fuel became very hot and reacted with the water to create hydrogen gas. Now, the data for the first day of the accident is, uh, is troubling, to say the least. The, the data, as, as I've been able to put it together, is um, uh, pretty complicated, but we'll work our way through it here. The, the, this is a multi-column table. The first column is the time and the day. But what I'm interested in is the fourth column over. And that table is in um, uh, pascals, which is a measure of pressure. I'm going to convert those uh, to, to pounds per square inch, which most of us are much more comfortable talking about. At the bottom of the table is right before the accident, and the pressure was atmospheric. And what that means, 0.1, is normal pressure, 14.5 pounds per square inch. Then the tsunami came, the plant lost its power, and the next data point is about eight hours later. Because remember now, most of the, um, most of the components were, um, didn't have electricity. So most of these readings were unavailable. Well, at two in the morning, the pressure inside the containment was almost nine times higher. That means it was about 125 pounds per square inch. This containment wasn't designed for 125 pounds per square inch. If you look a little further, though, by 9.30 in the morning, the pressure starts to drop. And for the next seven hours, the pressure's much lower than it was at 2 in the morning. So the question is, how could it be that the pressure in the afternoon was lower than the pressure in the early morning? Remember, there's a violent chemical reaction going on inside the nuclear reactor where all sorts of hydrogen gas is being generated. Well, one possible reason for the lower containment pressure is that the containment vent was open. But that hadn't happened yet. 
So what made the pressure drop down? One possibility, I believe to be the case, is something that happened 40 years ago at a plant called the Brunswick plant in North Carolina. Now the nuclear industry in the US, the IAEA, the Japanese are all aware of this, but they're all ignoring this test and pretending that it didn't happen. What happened 40 years ago was this. When a containment was, was pressurized, it was pressurized to just about 100 pounds, and then something really strange and unexpected happened. The top, the head of the containment, began to lift off of the bottom of the containment. Getting back to my, my uh, mug here, what happened was that the bolts that hold the top to the bottom began to stretch. And the top lifted and allowed the gases to slide out. That held the pressure in here at 100 pounds, even though gases were being pumped in. Now, this was not an accident. This was pressurized with normal air. It was a test. But the containment at Brunswick began to leak at around 100 pounds per square inch. Let's look at that table again from Fukushima. Where did Fukushima settle out at? Just about 100 pounds per square inch. What that tells me is that the head of the containment lifted up and gases began to sneak out into the reactor building, which is that box that surrounds it, well before the containment vent was even opened. Now another photograph of the site right before the explosion clearly shows that the containment vent was open. You'll see the stack on the, on the right of this picture, and it has steam coming out the top, smoke coming out the top. What that is is it's highly radioactive gases and water vapor, and it's creating that steam. So we know that right before the explosion, the containment vent was working. Now, the Japanese are saying, well, the containment vent was working, but the, the pipes were somehow or other leaking hydrogen into the plant as well, and that's what caused the explosion. To my way of thinking, the data doesn't support the interpretation of the nuclear industry and the Japanese. What the data does support is the Brunswick test from 40 years ago. It seems to me that for eight hours or more, the containment at Fukushima was basically ruptured, that the top had popped up and gases were sliding out so that it couldn't go over 100 pounds per square inch. And hydrogen gases were leaking into the containment, out of the containment, and into the reactor building for a long period of time. After that, it only took a spark to blow the, con to blow the reactor building up. This is a really important distinction. The nuclear industry, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, and the Japanese are saying that we can make the vent stronger so that this, this accident can't happen. But if the nuclear head is lifting up, the vent is irrelevant. The containment on the Mark I design has a design flaw that the containment vent can't solve. Whether or not the nuclear reactor containment at Fukushima maintained its integrity is a critical question to the operating fleet of BWR reactors throughout the world. I'll be working on some more information over the next week, and we'll have another video up shortly. Thank you very much. I'll keep you informed.